Hello, everyone. I'm Maddie, and this is another episode of Tech Insights for Visionaries. This podcast is all about the latest trends in technology and how they affect businesses and consumers around the world. This podcast is produced by a team of software engineers from MobyDev, a software development company. They share their experience in machine learning, augmented reality, and other data science technologies. This and other episodes are posted as articles on mobydev.biz. For more details, be sure to check them out. Hi there, I'm Sean. Today, we're going to talk about progressive web app development. This is a really hot topic for many businesses and has a lot of value for app users. No matter what industry you work in, PWAs have a lot of good uses. They're especially important for users because it can help them save space on their devices and are only powered by the user's browser and internet connection. Not having to install an app does sound like a nice bonus. I'm familiar with progressive web apps, but I'm excited to talk about what has changed over the years and what the future looks like for the technology. Me too. It's been a really exciting last few years. Progressive web apps, also called PWAs, were first coined by Google engineer Alex Russell in 2015. When he called them progressive, he was referring to how these web-based apps behave and respond, similarly to native apps. However, there is no precise definition of what a PWA is, so there can be some gray area from time to time. I don't have a lot of space on my phone, so having a Twitter PWA is really handy for me. It runs entirely in Chrome, but it appears on my screen as its own app. Pretty helpful. Definitely. You can save on storage quite a bit when you use PWA versions of apps like Twitter, Instagram, and Spotify. However, there are other benefits of progressive web apps. Since they're built for web browsers, they can respond to different size screens very easily. This makes building a consistent design experience for users very easy. Developers also work with smaller code bases when building these apps. So not only are they lightweight and fast, but their time to market is much shorter. So why haven't all apps just run in the browser? Browser-based apps like PWAs aren't the best fit for every situation. One major drawback is that they don't have direct access to all the capabilities of a platform that a native app does. Some platforms have also restricted the capabilities of progressive web apps. However, support is improving as time goes on. If you're planning on using a device's hardware and software to its fullest potential, a PWA isn't the best way to go. So what are PWAs used for in the real world? Well, you mentioned Twitter earlier. Twitter's a great example because it's not a small company or cash-strapped startup. Although PWAs are easier and cheaper to produce, Twitter chose to do it anyway for its light browser experience. When Twitter Lite was rolled out, they saw a 75% increase in tweets, a 65% increase in pages per session, and a 20% decrease in bounce rate. Wow, that's a huge improvement. Definitely. Forbes and Pinterest also have PWAs for their users to take advantage of. Forbes saw a 43% increase in sessions and 100% increase in engagement. Pinterest brought in a 44% increase in user-driven ad revenue. Other companies are taking advantage of this, like Uber and AliExpress. Instagram has a PWA as well, and these are just a few examples. So earlier you mentioned that there is a lot of gray area about what a PWA is. We should explore that further to get a better idea of what a PWA is in 2021. What defines it apart from alternatives? Well, let's talk about the difference between progressive web apps, native apps, cross-platform apps, and web apps. From that, we should have a better idea of what a PWA is. We already talked about the difference between a PWA and a native app. Native apps have much more control over the device and take up more space, since their code bases tend to be larger. Cross-platform apps are somewhat similar, utilizing hybrid technologies like React Native, PhoneGap, or Flutter. Although a cross-platform language like React Native is made for building cross-platform native apps that can be achieved with a single code base, it demands a broader skill set from your team. This is because they have to deal with various native controls and plugins, which are written in different languages like Java or Objective-C. This will depend on the platform. There are also PhoneGap apps that are made to be cross-platform. These are web apps that are wrapped in a native container. 
This container has access to various platform APIs through a set of native plugins. Despite the huge list of available plugins, you might need something custom and will have to implement it on your own. Again, with the help of Android and iOS developers. Progressive web apps are just built like web pages, right? Yep. PWAs are built mostly from JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. They use modern JS frameworks like React, Angular, and Vue. PWAs are most closely related to cross-platform apps, but they are cheaper to produce since you can complete them with a smaller team without any specific or unique skills. What about regular web apps? You know, the not progressive variety? <laughs> <laughs> yes, pure web apps are strictly limited by the capabilities of the browser. This means that web apps do not offer the same kind of instability that makes a PWA so convenient for users. While they can offer similar benefits, such as the responsive and lightweight design seen in many single-page applications, the key difference is the PWA's standardized approach to simulating the native experience. Let's compare PWAs to application frameworks like Electron and Flutter. Electron is strictly a web app framework with disadvantages in application size and security that make it generally unsuitable for PWA development. However, Flutter is more familiar for PWA developers. Both PWA and Flutter emphasize development in a single code base with cross-platform native functionality. However, Flutter only uses the new Dart web language, whereas a PWA can be written in any language, with many older languages offering more support. So, since PWAs are made to run on web browsers, that pretty much eliminates all compatibility issues, right? Not quite. But this is a great question that you brought up. There are some limitations based on platform, due to varying support from each browser used. On iOS, PWA support is fairly limited. Although support is a little limited right now, here's a fun fact. Apple only used web apps when the first iPhone was released in 2007. Oh, that's really interesting. Eventually, Apple released an SDK for developers to work with, leading to more open development of apps for the platform. However, Apple's regulations continued to restrict developers a great deal, and we can still see this in action in the modern day. Although PWAs have been supported on iOS since iOS 11.3, they still must be distributed via the App Store and wrapped in native code. This in some ways defeats the purpose of a PWA's single code base approach and easy installation. What about Android? Android's open source approach has led to much broader support for progressive web apps. This gives developers the freedom and flexibility to write and distribute apps however they'd like. Android also enables certain platform functionality for PWAs, such as push notifications. This allows developers to provide a more seamless native experience within their apps. There are a lot of browsers out there, not just Chrome and Safari. What is compatibility like between different browsers? Good question. Compatibility varies depending on the browser you're using. There's a lot of variety here, but there are a few browsers which definitely do not support PWAs. These are the desktop version of Firefox, Internet Explorer, and Facebook mobile browser. So what's the current state of progressive web apps in 2021? Not only have PWAs been adopted more widely over the years, but their use by consumers has been increasing. It's hard to see the market share that PWAs take up, but estimates based on Chrome web statistics put the current number of PWA-like page loads at about 19%. A survey of e-commerce decision makers revealed that 9% of e-commerce companies planned on investing in progressive web apps in 2021. Additionally, 8% of e-commerce companies reported that they are already using PWAs, and 28% of companies did not have plans to invest in a PWA in 2021. Research suggests that the PWA market will reach a value of $10.77 billion by 2027, representing annual growth of over 30% between now and that time. Current support for PWAs is fairly good, but there are some limitations. Every major platform, including iOS, Mac, Android, and PC, now offer some level of PWA support. Android provides the best support, with iOS and Mac being the most limited. Apple's strict control over the apps available on its platform is the biggest hindrance to PWA adoption on iOS. Developers and project owners considering PWA and their own application should consider these limitations. The PWA market is steadily growing, 
along with platform support, so early adopters may find themselves ahead of their competitors, but it is tough to tell exactly how long this growth could take. Interestingly, Instagram Lite was once a PWA, but has been rebuilt this year to be a native application. We aren't sure why Instagram made this decision, but there is some speculation that Facebook did this to test out their internet framework called Blocks. What about the future? What can we expect from progressive web apps down the road? Well, here's some good news. Microsoft and Google are going to partner up. Microsoft's development tool, PWA Builder, will be using Google's Bubble Wrap technology. PWA Builder makes writing these apps easier, and Bubble Wrap helps developers package their apps for distribution on the Google Play App Store. This announcement came along with the introduction of support for new features, including native app shortcuts and advanced Android features, now available through PWA Builder. The collaborative efforts of tech giants like Google and Microsoft are extremely promising for the future of PWA adoption. That sounds great. What are some factors that will decide if a business should use a progressive web app or a different method? If your product strategy requires fast market entry and coverage of multiple platforms with a single code base, you should absolutely use a progressive web app. PWAs enable startups to rapidly roll out apps to market cheaply and efficiently, encouraging the first-time users to revisit the application and getting them engaged with the help of push notifications and in-app banners make PWAs a powerful tool for marketing strategy implementation. This is also good for larger corporations that would like to include users with limited access to high-performance platforms or who prefer a more streamlined, lightweight experience. PWAs are also useful when your application requires support of offline modes. PWAs are handy in case you're looking to upgrade your legacy web application into a more modern format. If you are looking to do something more advanced, especially something that needs to run without limitations on iOS or Mac platforms, then you may not want to develop a PWA. This is crucial because of Apple's strict regulation of their platform. They also hold a significant share of your potential user base. What do you think would be some good tips and recommendations for anyone making a progressive web app? Most importantly, it should feel like a native app when the user interacts with it. It's a good practice to show splash screens during the application startup, and the app should have a set of icons of different sizes that will be used on the home screen as the app logo. The app should also have a properly configured theme that matches the device's default settings. Some browsers still do not have complete support of manifest.json, so you may have to fall back on meta tags to specify theme or tile colors in Safari or Microsoft Edge. Make sure to always promote the app installation. Adding the PWA to the user's home screen, along with push notifications, are crucial features that dramatically improve conversion rate and user re-engagement. If your app needs offline support, or you simply want to use enhanced caching strategies in order to reduce the network traffic and decrease page load time, we recommend you check out the official set of libraries from Google. These are specifically designed to solve these problems and make PWA development easier. Whenever the new version of a PWA app goes live, you should make the user aware of the new updates. You can achieve this by displaying custom in-app banners or notifications, prompting a user to update the application. Note. The service worker won't automatically update until all the application windows or tabs that are using the previous version are closed. If you don't show the banner, the user might not know about updates for a while. What if they don't update? Will that break functionality at all? Great question. This is exactly why it's very important to make sure your API is backwards compatible on the server. Make sure to thoroughly test the code, especially the app initialization logic. In case the app crashes during its initialization, and it hasn't yet established a subscription for the incoming service worker updates, the user's device might be stuck with a buggy app version until it's manually reinstalled. We recommend to always create some fallbacks to automatically unregister the active service worker in case of unhandled application errors. In this case, you'll be able to quickly deliver fixes to the end user. Try to make your PWA as fast as possible. You can test and debug the performance using Lighthouse and other Chrome Dev tools. Also, don't forget about these best practices applicable to regular web app development. You should always try to create responsive and adaptive web applications that properly work on all platforms and as many form factors as possible. You should always follow your team's established code style to promote consistency. You can establish this yourself 
by configuring the pre-commit git hook, which will invoke code linters and formatters. Write strictly typed code if possible. You can use TypeScript for this. You should design component-based applications, decouple UI, and business logic to create simple and reusable components that are easy to compose into a complex UI. Most importantly, don't forget to perform code reviews to help one another out. We can't develop code in a vacuum. I'm really excited to see where PWAs take us next. It sounds like developing applications is only going to get easier and more feature-rich as time goes on. I agree. There are a lot of cool and interesting things coming up in the future with progressive web apps. Since software applications are improving so quickly, it's critical that your business stays up to date to stay competitive in your industry. If you're building a new app for your users or upgrading an existing app to a modernized platform, we highly recommend you reach out to software professionals like MobyDev so that we can have a conversation about your business needs and goals. Together, we can come up with a solution that can best fit your needs and the needs of your users while maintaining a short and reliable return on investment. Thanks for joining us for this episode about the latest developments and trends in progressive web app development. If you enjoyed this podcast, please be sure to subscribe and share this episode with friends and colleagues so that they can learn about these important trends as well. Join us next time to learn more about the exciting technologies that are powering our world. See you next time.